We're now uh, ready to talk about comparative statics. In comparative static analysis, what you do is uh, first you have a model, an economic model, that you solve uh, for the endogenous variables, the equilibrium values of your endogenous variables. And uh, in comparative static analysis, once you've done that, you then see how a change in one of the parameters or the exogenous variables affect the equilibrium values of your endogenous variables. Okay. And uh, you do that by using partial derivatives. Okay. So let me illustrate the comparative static analysis using the simple demand and supply model. Okay. Recall this model. You have this demand function where uh, quantity demanded is a linear function of price. You have a supply function which is assumed to be linear. And then you have this equilibrium condition. In equilibrium, quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. Now in this model, there are three equations, three endogenous variables. QD, QS, and P. Okay. Of course, in equilibrium, QD equals QS, so you could say, taking that into account, that there are only two endogenous variables, uh, price and quantity. Okay. Uh, the first step in comparative static analysis is uh, to solve the model or the endogenous variables. Okay. And let's it's easy to get the expression for equilibrium price here. If you just substitute these two equations, QD equals QS, you get A minus BP equals minus C plus DP. And uh, adding C to both sides and adding BP to both sides, you get A plus C equals BP plus DP. Factoring out the price, you get B plus D times price. And then uh, dividing both sides by B plus D, you get your expression for equilibrium price, A plus C over B plus D equals P star. And I'm going to put a star on this price to denote that this is the equilibrium price. Okay. And let me just rewrite it again and put A plus C over B plus D on the right hand side of the equation. So we have P star equals That's the expression for equilibrium price. Okay, this is just repeating stuff that we did in chapter three a long time ago. Uh, if we wanted the equilibrium quantity, then all we would have to do is go back to either the demand curve or the supply curve and substitute in for P. Okay, if we go back to the demand curve and substitute in for P, we get Q star equals A minus B P star. Okay. Just go to this demand curve and substitute in uh, Q star for this and P star for that. Okay. And we know what P star is, we've already figured that out, so Q star must be which we can uh, s simplify a little bit and rewrite this as putting a B plus D in the denominator and the numerator here. 
multiplying by 1, we get that is equal to A. Okay. Then uh, minus B times uh, A plus C, all divided by B plus D. Now these two terms have a common denominator. And uh, if we write this expression out, we get AB minus AB. OK, that cancels. So this numerator just becomes AD minus BC over B plus D. So this is our expression for Q star. Let me write it up here. A Q star, the equilibrium quantity is just AD minus BC over B plus D. And let's close that in a rectangle. Okay. So here's our expressions for equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Notice both of these expressions are expressed in terms of parameters. In some models, you would have parameters and exogenous variables. In this particular model, there are no exogenous variables, so it's just parameters on the right-hand side. Once we have these expressions, then we can do comparative static analysis. And we can say, OK, what happens to the equilibrium price if this parameter A changes? What happens to the equilibrium price if the parameter B changes? What happens to the equilibrium price if C changes? What happens to the equilibrium price if D changes? By looking at these comparative static derivatives. The ones we, if we're interested in what happens to the equilibrium price, then we're interested in these derivatives. We're interested in how the equilibrium price changes as one of these parameters changes, then we're interested in these four partial derivatives. And usually, what we're looking at is the sign of these partial derivatives. Um, sometimes we'd look at the magnitude, but oftentimes all we're interested in is the sign. What is the sign of this? Is this greater than or less than 0? Is that greater than or less than 0? Is this derivative greater or less than 0? Okay. And notice what this is, this partial derivative. The sign of it is telling you what happens to P star as A changes. If partial P star partial A is positive, that means A and P star move in the same direction. As A goes up, P star goes up. As A goes down, P star goes down. If partial P star partial A is negative, that means A and P star move in the opposite direction. A goes up. P star goes down. A goes down, P star goes up. OK, so maybe that's all that we have to do for comparative static analysis. That's all it is. It's just uh, first solving the model for all the endogenous variables expressed in terms of parameters and exogenous variables, and then checking all the signs of the partial derivatives. Okay.